Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about sinking funds, specifically my sinking funds, how I break them down, how I calculate what I'm going to be saving, what I put into them, the things that I think about when I'm figuring out how much money I'm putting in there, and everything in between. So if this is something that you wanted to know, stick around and let's get started. Okay, so first things first, let's just start with sinking funds. I'm sure there's a million videos on YouTube that tells you about what sinking funds are and breaks them down really simply for you, but I just wanna cover my bases. So to start, sinking funds are an account. It could be any sort of account, cash envelopes, savings account at your bank, um, however you wanna do it, but it's used to save money for a known or upcoming expense. So some examples of this can include things like a wedding, and this can be your wedding, somebody else's wedding, anything. And you can also break this down into tiny little categories like flowers, dress, centerpieces. It can, you can break it down into little tiny accounts to make it easier for you. And you can get quick goals met that way. Or you can just make it one big envelope. However you want to do it and whatever works best for you. Another one, birthdays. This is a very common one that you will come across. It could be birthdays, gifts, however you guys like to label it. Um, another one, Christmas. Pretty much everybody in the finance community here on YouTube has a Christmas sinking fund. Christmas sinking fund is actually what um, sold my husband on cash budgeting. So we love our Christmas sinking fund. Another one is vacation. Everybody needs a vacation. Not everybody can afford one. And so the way that we afford cash vacations is to have a sinking fund. And we actually took the kids on a cash vacation to Salem, Massachusetts. Um, not last Halloween, but the Halloween before. And it was incredible. We spent 10 days there over Halloween and it was amazing. We paid all cash using our sinking fund. Um, we came, we went with no debt, came back with no debt, and we didn't have to worry about how we were going to pay the bills when we made it home. It was the best, most stress-free vacation I've ever went on. So if you don't have a vacation sinking fund, highly, highly recommend it. Um, another one could be HOA fees. This is something that more people have than I actually thought. I didn't realize that this was so common but this is actually one that you can have that's really great and really helpful. Um, and another one would be car registration. This is a yearly um, fee that you pay and I actually work this into my car maintenance um, sinking fund. So, but people prefer to kind of have this separate as well from their maintenance. So just again, depends on personal preference. So how to calculate the amount that you're going to contribute. So it would be total cost of the expense divided by the amount of months until the full amount is needed. And that equals the amount that you're going to save each month. So for a very simple example, you wanna save $1,000 for Christmas and it is March 8, 9, 10, 11. So let's do it, say, cause we're at the end of March. So let's try for April and you have eight months left. So $1,000 divided by eight means that you're gonna to have to pay in $125 a month to meet that goal by December or by November 30th. All right, so this is very, very simple. Again, you could break this down to into, you know, how much per paycheck, which is what I do. So if we were saying, you know, you get paid four times a month. So if you get paid weekly, you would be putting in, you know, 3125 per week. My husband gets paid semi-monthly, so we would be putting in 6250. So it all just depends on how you would like to do it. The great thing about sinking funds and saving and budgeting is that it's very forgiving and very easy to change and personalize 
or what works best for you and your family. So the next thing that I want to talk to you about is my personal sinking fund categories. So these are all my categories and these are all going to be real numbers. And I want to talk to you about what I thought about when I was coming up with the amount that I wanted to save. So for Christmas, my husband and I put in $188 per month which will give us a total by the end of December of $22.56. Now, I know that seems like a lot for Christmas, and it kind of is, but this, what this includes is my husband and I, a tradition that we have every year is to go out together on Black Friday, and we take $300 each in cash to spend on whatever we want for ourselves. That's our Christmas gift. So... That's going to include the $600 for Black Friday. It's also going to include gifts. Now this is gifts for our children, our friends, our family, whoever we're giving gifts to that year. I also am my little brother's um, legal guardian, so gifts for him as well. I always take care of him. So that is all included in there. Another thing that we consider, Christmas cards. I don't always... Um, get like family photos taken for Christmas cards. Sometimes I just send out regular Christmas cards or I even put together photos that I took myself on my phone and order it through like Walgreens. They do really beautiful photo cards. Um, one year we did do professional photos. So that would be something that you could include in this as well is the cost of, to have professional photos done. Um, but I always, always, um, think about what I need for Christmas. So that would be Christmas cards and also postage. I think it cost almost $50 for me to send out all of my Christmas cards last year. So you have to think about that when you're doing this. Also, any events that you wanted to go to, we take our kids to a holiday light event every year. And I think it's like $5 to get in or something like that. There's also a holiday lights event at the Henry Ford Museum near us. So anytime that we wanna take the kids to anything, um, I always make sure that I factor in the cost of the events. Another thing would be wrapping paper. So any wrapping paper, gift bags, anything like that, ribbon, bows, I always factor that in. And then also to any special meals that you're going to be making. So any holiday meals, if you're going to your in-laws or you're going to another family and you have to bring a dish, um, if you're going to be making cookies with your kids or if you have a special dish that you always make um, during the year or even like eggnog and alcohol, anything like that, um, you want to make sure that you factor those in. So out of this money, all of this stum stuff comes out. So baking ingredients is another one too. So these are all things that I think about. Um, my husband and I, at the beginning of every year, we sit down and we plan out our entire year financially. Events that we wanna do, trips that we wanna take, things that we're gonna be a part of. Um, so this is kind of how I get all of these things and then we figure out how much we're gonna be putting in, how much we'll need, and that's how we determine our contribution into our sinking funds for the year. Um, the next thing would be clothing. So we put in $100 a month for clothing, and that would give us $1,200 for the year. And this includes clothes and shoes, obviously, for entire family. So my entire family. I have two kids, my husband and myself. I do have a separate account for my little brother because I provide him with all of his clothes and his needs that he has. So this sinking fund is specifically just for the um, people under my roof. This also includes any holiday clothing that we would need if we needed, you know, dresses, um, shoes for an event, if we needed, you know, certain outfits to have family photos done. That's also something that I would include in this as well. Also work clothes. Um, now I do not work out of the house. My husband hasn't worked out of the house for over a year now because of COVID, but any work clothes that he would need, he does have to dress um, business casual. So any clothes that he would need would also come out of this money. 
car maintenance. Now car maintenance is a big one. We pay $76 per month into this to give us a total of $912 for the year. We have two vehicles. We have one that we lease and one that we own outright. So in this, I calculate our car registration for both cars. And it's pretty high in Michigan, unfortunately. Um, any oil changes we may need. And this is for both cars. Um, any repairs. And I think I've talked about this in a few of my videos. Um, our small car that we have needs a new transmission, so that's something that we're saving to pay cash for now. Um, any car washes. any accessories, air fresheners, anything like that, that would all come out of here. Um, we paid for all weather mats for our lease vehicle, so that amount came out of here. Wiper fluid, wiper blades, anything like that, that would all come out of this sinking fund. So that's all something that you wanna keep in mind too when you are calculating an amount like this. Now, if we were not to use this amount, for really for any of these, they would roll over into the next year. Vacation. Vacation is a small one. We don't um, feel the need to take a vacation every single year. Um, it's nice too, but it's not something that we do. So we put in $50 per month, which would give us $600 a year. We really like to stay close to home. Um, we do want to do more things. COVID has made it kind of impossible, but we have a beautiful state and we're lucky to be surrounded by lots of things to do. So um, we may look into probably going up north sometime this year, which is pretty inexpensive. So this may be something that would cover the cost of that. But when I'm thinking about vacation and how much I wanna put into our envelope, I think about things like lodging, hotel stays, um, Airbnbs, things like that, gas. We pretty much drive everywhere we go food, which is the probably the most expensive part of the entire trip. Um, entertainment, any events that you want to do while you're there. If you're not driving, airfare or a rental car. And souvenirs, this is one that we always forget about. Did I spell that right, you guys? I know I left out an E somewhere, I think, right? I don't know. We're gonna keep rolling with it. But souvenirs also. So when we go on trips, we allow our children $50 each, and that's what they get for the whole trip. So whatever they wanna buy with that, that's what they get. The same for us as well. And what's funny is that when we went to Salem, there were so many things to do, so many things to buy, and we left with nothing. I take that back. We bought a book for our homeschool, on the history of the Salem Witch Trials and a poster on palmistry um, to hang in our home as decor. And that was it. When you set yourself limits and you redefine what matters most in your life, it really changes your perspective on things. There were so many things that we wanted to buy, but it, was, it really came down to what would I do with this? Where would I put this? Would this really come to mean anything to me later on down the line? So um, if you give yourself a limit, and a budget, I think it definitely helps to kind of put things in perspective and you're like, well, I only have $50 to spend, so would this really be worth it or not? So that's definitely something that I highly recommend. Now, birthdays. Birthdays could totally um, be different for everybody, but we put in $40 a month, which would give us $480 for the year. Now, when we buy gifts for other people, we pretty much budget $20. Um, now, that usually is put on a gift card. I don't like to give people gifts that they don't want or would not be useful to them. Um, so I tend to stick with gift cards, even though it's impersonal. It, I think they're really practical, and I know I appreciate when I get them. But if I don't know of an item to get them that I know will be useful to them, I would hate to add clutter to their life or the stress of what am I going to do with this? Would Renee be upset if I regifted this or donated it? So I just prefer to get them a gift card, um, whether it's a Visa gift card that they can buy whatever they want, or if I get to their favorite restaurant or their favorite store, I tend to stick with $20 and that seems to be the sweet spot um, for an appreciated gift. So it's usually $20. Um, 
but not just gifts are what I think about in this. I also use this to pay for party supplies. So any party supplies, I'm really big into DIY to keep costs down. Um, and also any experiences. We have, both of our kids are born in December, so it's really hard to have birthday parties um, during the month of December just because of holidays, people being out of town, people being sick. So um, we tend to stick with experiences or small parties. Um, so that's definitely something that we think about when we are planning on how much we're putting into our birthday sinking fund. Now the next one would be pet care. So pet care gets, I think 10, yes, I put $20 a month for a total of $240 for the year. So what includes what I'm including in this is, we have one cat, by the way, we don't have any dogs or anything, so included in this would be food, litter, treats, and any vet visits. Lucky for us, she hates toys. Um, she doesn't really like anything, <laughs> but... Any visits, she's up to date on her shots and things like that. So um, she's very low maintenance as far as what we need to buy for her. Um, so the cost tends to stay down. But if you were coming up and you were thinking about wanting to get a new dog or a new pet of some kind, saving up for that and then getting it would definitely be something that I would suggest, especially starting like a pet health fund. Um, or looking into some sort of pet insurance just to kind of help keep any costs down because I know that that can be so expensive if a pet um, unfortunately gets sick or anything or needs a procedure done that can really make or break an entire financial budget for anybody. The next one would be miscellaneous holidays. This um, I started probably about a year after I started budgeting because I saw that I was breaking my budget around Easter or Halloween because I forgot to pack her in certain things. So I put in $20 a month, which gives us $240 for the year. And how I got to this is I included things like Halloween costumes. Halloween costumes can be really expensive. Also, um, any candy that you pass out for trick-or-treaters. Um, any events, we always go to the um, Henry Ford trick-or-treating event near us, which is wonderful. Um, we go to the zoo lights, and that's really great. So I always make sure that we have um, the money in here for that. Also, with right now, Easter baskets or Easter basket um, treats. Any events for Easter, if you guys do any like Easter egg hunts or anything like that, if you have like a, a dinner that you make, um, factoring that in as well. And then also another one is Valentine's. So I do buy the kids little Valentine treats. Um, my kids are homeschooled, so I don't really have to worry about like class treats, but that would definitely be something to think about too, any class treats that you buy for um, any holiday, if you send in Valentine's or if you send in um, treats for a Halloween party in the class, anything like that, I would definitely um, put that in here as well. We don't make a huge deal of Fourth of July. We always go camping. Um, but if you are a family that really likes to buy lots of fireworks or you go to carnivals, um, I would definitely factor in like things like going on the rides, buying the fair food, things like that. That would definitely be something to add in there as well. Homeschool. Homeschool right now only gets, I think I do $10, yes, I do $10 a month, which is $120 a year, which is not a lot at all. I usually do beef this up probably right around this time, and you'll see that increase um, with my next cash stuffing video, um, but this would include things like printer ink, which I am on the lookout for a different printer 
that does not use ink cartridges. Um, any supplies she may need or even I may need. Um, curriculum, which is a huge portion of this. Our co-op events. and any field trips. So I definitely need to start pouring more into this fund. Some bonus sinking funds that I have are home projects. And the amounts vary on this, but so far I've been able to put in about $100 a month, which would give us $1,200 for the year. And when I am thinking about this, I'm thinking about any um, tools or items needed for projects. Also, um, home decor. Now, we just bought a new um, sideboard for our living room. So some money is going to come out of this to kind of stylize that. Also, patio furniture is a temporary one as well. We have a deck on our new home, so we had no patio furniture because we were coming from a home that didn't have anything like that. So we are trying to save up for that. And this has been getting $100 a month as well. But we are going to be spending some of our um, stimulus money on this. So I've just been setting money aside so that we didn't have to pay so much out of our stimulus. Um, so that I may show you guys what we end up getting or how we save money. Um, just depends on how that ends up. But we may be starting some new ones. Um, some other ones would be a landscaping one because we do have a lot of yard now and we have gardens. So I want to start putting money into that and um, a baby one. We are trying to have another baby, so starting to save up so we can um, start buying things that we need, clothing, diapers, things like that. I would like to start um, another sinking fund for that, just to start putting some money aside. So moving on, the next part of my budget includes cash envelopes. Now I include these and pretty much count them as sinking funds. For groceries, our groceries get $450 per month, which works out to be about $5,400 per year. So this includes all of our food and household items. Some people have a separate sinking fund for household items, and that's totally fine if you need to keep track of something like that, if it's something that you're finding that you're buying a lot of, or something that seems to be breaking your budget for you, I highly, highly recommend separating that out just so you can kind of get control of that and see where the money is going. The next one for us is gas. We put in $220 a month, which ends up being $26.40 a year. Now, remember I said we do have two vehicles. And one is driven for um, leisure, errands, things like that. The other one would be driven to and from work. But because my husband's been working from home for the last year, we have really not been driving that car. But I still want to keep our budget the same so that we don't get out of a habit that we're used to. So I've been able, if you look at my cash envelope stuffings, um, I've been able to take the money out of here and roll it into debt. So that's been really nice to be able to do. The next envelope is personal spending. My husband gets $70 per month, which ends up being $840 for the year. And I give myself $50 a month, which ends up being $600. Now that is not, it, I, we both always get $70 each. I voluntarily decided to give myself less um, because we are currently paying off a Peloton bike for me. Um, my husband was actually against me reducing that for myself, but I just had some guilt in paying off a bike for myself and giving myself $70 spending money. So I just lowered it a little bit just to kind of ease that guilt, I guess. But 
Um, so any personal spending would include anything that doesn't come out of our envelope. So anything that we want for ourselves, um, that wouldn't be like clothing or groceries or anything like that. That's what we spend our money on. Dining out gets $40 a month. This is a new one that we've added. We typically don't dine out, um, but I've been getting burnt out on cooking a little bit. So even if I get like one night out of the month, that is huge for me. So um, we added in a dining out. So this could also mean, and I think last paycheck, I think we ended up using it on going out to Starbucks as a family. So sometimes it's not even like dining out. It's kind of just treats out together. So that's also really nice. Entertainment gets $20 a month. And that ends up being 240 So this would be any events that we would go to that weren't included in any of our holiday or birthday envelopes. Um, movies out. Now remember, this is all hypothetical, pre-planned before the pandemic. This isn't anything that we do right now. Um, but also to board games. We are huge into board games here. So any board games, card games, anything like that that would benefit the family, um, money would come out of here. Toiletries gets $20 a month. And that would be for the whole family. So this would include um, shampoo and conditioner, deodorant, um, razor blades, anything like that. Now, my background is in cosmetology, so I am able to cut everybody's hair, so we don't have any costs for that. The only time there's costs like that is for me, and I usually take that out of my personal spending. Medical gets $40 per month, usually. Um, if we're short, this is one of the envelopes that I can kind of cut back on because we do have an HSA, so there really isn't a huge need for this. Um, so I can cut back on that when I need to. So this is 480 for the year. So any costs of like vitamins, meds, co-pays if we run out on our HSA. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the year, if there's anything less left in this envelope, I roll it right over into my medical bills. Now I am huge, huge into paying off our debt and being debt free, um, but medical bills, I do not let bother me because I think the cost of medical in this country is astronomical and completely unprecedented and um, I don't let this bother me. I pay, you'll see in my um, budgeting videos, I pay them $60 a month and, and that's really all I allow to stress me and then I'll just pay any extra that we have left over in our medical or any left over on our HSA card so um, I can get more into that if you want or we can have a conversation about it in the comments but I do not let medical bills stress me because I think they're uncalled for but that's another long drawn-out story so let's move on um, and then a new one that I've just recently added that you guys will see is miscellaneous. Um, I was noticing that we were having some extra costs come up or I would forget to budget for something. Um, it happens. So we have to give ourselves a little bit of leeway because I know that I am, if I have like one small failure, um, I tend to just be like, you know what, fine, forget it. It's not working out for me. I'm done. And that was happening a lot. So miscellaneous gives me that buffer. Um, if I forget anything or if I run out in another category that I'm not robbing from all of my envelopes to try and cover something. So miscellaneous, if I have extra, usually it seems like lately it's been getting 80 to 100 per paycheck or 80 to 100 a month, I'm sorry, which ends up being 960 to $1,200 per year. So this would be any costs that are unbudgeted or over budget. Okay. So our next one is my savings. So 
So what we are working towards now is our, we have our emergency fund, our simple $1,000 emergency fund. I mean, we have more than that in there, but what we are working towards now is a six month emergency fund. And what I include in that is, if I can remember the whole list that I made, I include all of our bills for the month, all of our cash envelopes for the month, and all of our sinking funds. And it ends up being $26,436. Now, uh, in a dream world, I would love to get this done as quickly as possible. Um, but right now, I am just hoping for $100 a month until we get that credit card paid off and then I can throw more money into this. But right now, this is what we're working with. And so when you look at this and it's very scary and you're like, that's Renee, that's unrealistic and it's gonna take you forever. Well, that's why I didn't do, what did I do with my stimulus money? What did I do with my tax return money? Cause we just throw it in here. And that way we can eat away at that number because it is a big scary number. But think of how you would feel if you had that money and your husband loses his job or you lose your job or heaven forbid something happen you have that cushion to be able to take care of your family what a gift so that's why we're doing what we're doing and we're working so hard to get that credit card paid off as fast as possible so we can start throwing more money into this and just have that available to us if we ever need it but if we don't it's there and it would just go right into our retirement. So it would just be money that would carry with us until we were older and that would just add to our retirement. So Layla, she gets $20 a month in her savings, which totals 240 a year. And this is just general savings for her. Is this all that goes into this? No. If she gets money for birthdays, or if she has money that she wants to put in there or anything like that, that would go into here as well. But just like overall, in general, these are the numbers that I'm giving. Sebastian, same exact. 240, again, general savings. Now, 52-week challenge. I am doing the $1,000 in a year challenge. Each week, it varies. Purpose for this? I don't know yet. I don't know if my husband and I are going to take it and take a trip together um, because we have not been without our kids in over 365 days, um, but I'm not sure yet. I think that's something that he and I have to discuss um, and figure out what we're going to do with it. If we're going to roll it into savings, if we're going to buy something for the house or work on a project, whatever, um, but we do need to discuss what we're going to do with that, but right now it's just nice to have savings. The $1 challenge varies every week. Again, I'm not sure what the purpose is. What are you guys doing with yours? Do you guys roll it into savings? Do you take yourself out with it? What do you do? $5 challenge, same thing. It varies. But I would really love to know what you guys are doing with yours because I'm not a big spender. As you guys, if you've watched my videos, you know I am, I'm just not a spender like that. So give me some ideas of what you guys do with this. Do you guys put it towards your emergency funds? Do you do something really fun with it? Do you throw it into a sinking fund like vacation or beauty or clothes? Or what do you guys do with it? I really want to know. And then the change challenge. I do think that change challenge is just going to go straight into savings um, or emergency fund because I don't think it's going to be a huge amount. Um, so it would be nice to just throw that right into our emergency fund and I do think that I am going to get one of those counting jars because I just think it would be really motivational to have um, and then extra savings extra savings is just kind of like a slush fund for any um, money that I have over after I budget out where all of my money is going um, and so extra savings is just a nice padding um, and at the end of the year, if we have something in there, it's probably just going to roll over into emergency fund. So it can be emergency fund at the end of the year, or it can also function as a padding. And the amount, again, varies. So that is it. That is how I plan all of my sinking funds, all of my cash envelopes. 
this is how I break down all of my money um, just so that I know exactly where it's going, how we're doing. But I highly, highly recommend sitting down if you have a spouse or a partner that you plan with. Planning for the year is the biggest, biggest step in all of this and figuring out what you have going on so that you know exactly how much you need to save and how much you want to put away or how much that you need to put away. So I highly recommend going through your sinking funds and thinking about everything that you want to come out of that because that's really going to affect how much money you're putting in there because you may look at car maintenance and say, gosh, I'm only putting in $20 a month, but my car registration costs even more than that or an oil change would just take away all of that money or you know lord forbid you know my tire goes that's going to cost more than even what I'm even putting in there so I have to adjust and put more money in there so I highly recommend taking a look at your sinking funds thinking about what it is that money is going to be for and what you would like to pull out of there in the meantime I hope this video helped and it gave you some tips and advice that maybe you hadn't heard before if you like it, give it a thumbs up, leave some comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe, and I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye!